first message last week or week before was overcoming fear, moving towards courage. This morning, overcoming doubt and moving to be a disciple. Some shit in upper, but a shishanite in modern light, or a rubandram, some way. Encounters, transformation, moving from doubt to being a disciple. God is looking for disciples. He's not looking for fans. There are a lot of spectators. There's a lot of fans. Every groupie, every band has their fans. Every sports team has a fan. Some of you are Gator fans. Some of you are Seminole fans. Some of you are, no. <laughs> Some of you are USF Bulls fans. Some of you are Tampa Bay Buccaneer fans. Some of you are big NBA fans. Miami Heat has a whole bunch of bandwagon fans right now. Fans are all over the place. Jesus was, does not want any fans, any people that just climb on board. He wants disciples. Go into all the world and make disciples of all men. Hallelujah. Disciples. Didn't you turn the lights on? <laughs> I didn't know there was a video or something. <laughs> can everybody see that? It's all right? You can see it? Praise God. Disciples. So moving from doubt to disciples in a familiar passage. I'm in the series of that. Encounters with Jesus after the resurrection. And that's the verse we read. 26 to 30, 31. We see that we need fellowship. The first verse in that 26. We need fellowship. Eight days later, what are Jerry and Yatana be seen on the ground? One week has elapsed. Are you there, Archie Gala? Ever to add in them? Are you there, Archie Gala? And I haven't seen you in a week. Where have you been, Thomas? See, Thomas missed out on something that God doesn't want us to miss out on. We need the fellowship of believers. Glory to God. We need each other. Why wasn't Thomas with the others? Where was Thomas? Was he so disappointed that he didn't want to be with his friends? Was he really downcast because Jesus had left them? Sometimes when we are in our most disappointing times is when we need each other. Praise God. Solitude sometimes will feed discouragement. There's a time and a place for solitude, but the body of Christ should come together for encouragement because otherwise, what will happen usually, and in the case of Thomas, we can probably guess that he had. A little bit of discouragement, self-pity, unwanted thoughts, blaming, fleshly thoughts, and ungodly thoughts. Amen? Praise God. We get more things done. We're in a corporate anointing, corporate worship. The person next to you may be the one that encourages you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn to that person and say, I'm glad you're here this morning. I'm glad you're here this morning. Glory to God. If Imagine this verse, if it did not have this. background of the What if Thomas was already with them in the first encounter? He would have what? Jesus came in the midst of them. If Thomas was there in the first place, he would have received the peace of God. He would have seen the presence of Jesus. He would have received the great commission. He would have been empowered because he breathed on them. Jesus did all this in the first time. But Thomas 
wasn't there. A whole lot of time already left. But aren't you right now? Number the one channel left. Brothers or last name Thomas or any Thomases, I'm excusing everyone. One of message is Sister Sophia, Sophia, that was just in the Bible, it's the Greek word for wisdom, Sophia. So, this is not about any Thomases here, it's for all of us in the Therahalitis and Lesha, number Thomas and I. All of our names are Thomas this morning. Then we'll see that in a minute. So one week of fear, one week of unbelief, one week of the lack of the presence of God. I was talking with one of our young people, and they really miss the midweek fellowship and the midweek of vibrancy of the worship. I don't know about you, I can't go a whole week without worshiping God. Oko, sadhiko, or archa, devate studika, devate aradika. We become dry, become tools in the hands of the enemy, the world, the flesh, the devil gets all over you. Get connected with the fellowship. Get into a small group. Come on Wednesday nights. Come on Fridays. Come and get involved in lots of things that are going on. Get yourself into worship. Listen to worship songs. Listen to good teaching. Get involved. Don't let eight days go by. And neglect the fellowship on the Lord's Day. Hebrews 10 says, don't neglect the gathering of yourself together. Praise God. Even as we near the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. We need the fellowship. We need the grace of God. Years ago we went to <clears throat> we went to California and the uh, saw the big redwoods in California. And I've given this illustration before. Those redwoods are 300 feet high. 40 feet around, and they're 250 years old, some of them. And some of them you can drive a car in the middle of it. California redwoods. How did they survive all the storms, all the cra crazy earthquakes in California? How did they survive all of these things? The secret is underground. They're, when they were planted, they were planted in groves and their roots start to intertwine with each other. Fellowship is like this. When you get connected with a brother and a sister, you get wound up with them. You won't fall. You'll last all the way down. If you're not connected, you're not growing. You're not growing. No connection, no growth. No growth. So here we see that as the first thing here in that section of that text. I'm in the text in chapter 20, verse 26. We need that. So transforming from doubt to disciples. First of all, we see a little bit about Thomas. What is Thomas? What was he doing? Is Thomas a person like this? Thomas was not like this. By the name of the Logumbor. Let's turn to 11, John chapter 11, verse 16. Thomas was uh, given a bad rap. Doubting Thomas and the Some shake him Thomas. But Thomas wasn't like that. Thomas was very courageous in chapter 11, verse 16. We read that in Malayalam chapter 11, verse 16. Didimos in the mayor of the Thomas Sahasishin Maroda. Avino to put a Marikan as an Nam Poga in the Barnum. Let's go die with this guy. How many of you were courageous enough to say that about anything today? I'm going to go die with this guy. I'm going to go die for this cause. I'm going to give my life for this reason or for this person. It takes a lot of courage. Who are you going to die for? You're going to die for anybody in the U.S.? You're going to die for anybody else? You're going to die for world leaders? You're going to die for philosophers? You have to have courage to say that. That's the former Thomas. He had doubts. He had doubts. Secondly, he was very curious. He was kind of callous. 
14, chapter 14, verse 5, we see him again here. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? Curious. He was callous, but he was also curious. And maybe some of us are in the same place. But now the John Mark 14, verse 5. Thomas have an order. Katave ni evada pohundu nu njangal aliyunnilla. Pinna vaidi engane aliyum endu parannu. So some of us are like this. We want to follow Christ, but we're not quite sure. Lord, where are you going to take us? What's going on? How are we going to get there? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? All parents have heard that from the back seat of the van, the minivan. Will the owner of a blue minivan please step forward? Yes, no, we're not there for the hundredth time. We're not there yet. Leave me alone. Dad, do you know where you're going? <laughs> How do you know where you're going? How do you know if you arrive somewhere if you don't know where you're going? We are like Thomas, just like that. Often we're going forward, but we don't know quite where we're going. If you aim at nothing, you're sure going to hit it. You're going to hit that nothing. He was callous, but he was also curious. We see ourselves in Thomas. Number three, he was he became cynical, he became skeptical. He knew it in that. He knew it the end John Mark. 20 verse 25. John chapter 20. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the verse yourself. Look at the verse yourself. 20 verse 25. He became a cynic. <laughs> I won't believe, no matter what, until I see it, I touch it, I feel it, I gotta know. We read the story about a man who slid over the side of a cliff and he grabbed a branch at the last second. He was about to die and he grabbed for something and he got a hold of a a branch that was hanging on the side of the cliff. Hundreds of feet down, he looked down, he was going to die. He started screaming, help me, somebody help me, somebody help me. He started screaming at the top of his voice. From the sky came a voice. He's saying, I'll help you, I'll help you. He said, help me, help me, I'm going to die. The voice came back and said, do you believe I can help you? Yes, yes, I believe. Would you help me? Then he screamed more. He says, help me. Do you believe I have the power to help you? The voice said, yes, I believe. And he's screaming and he's like barely hanging on. His grip is starting to fall. He says, please, just somebody help me. The voice came back and said, do you believe I love you enough to help you? And he said, yes. He's screaming even higher. And he says, yes, help me. The voice came back and said, then let go of the branch. And there was silence for a few seconds. And he said, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> we are often like that. We believe, but we wish it was somebody else. Wish something else. Have you become cynical? Some shake in the number of the day do we believe? Maybe we're waiting for somebody else. John the Baptist was in prison. He was the great precursor, pre-runner to the Christ, the Messiah. And he's in prison and he's asking, are you the guy or should we wait for somebody else? Hey, Jesus, are you the guy? Oh, Jesus was right in front of him. The dove descended, the voice from heaven. Jesus is in the water. And he doesn't believe. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk again. Tell John, it's right in front of you. But John had become a cynical, skeptic, 
അത്ഭുതങ്ങൾ കണ്ടാലും ചാപ്പ് വിശ്വസിക്കത്തില്ല അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് അത്ഭുതങ്ങളുടെ പുറകെ നമ്മൾ പോകാൻ ദൈവം ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നില്ല ദൈവം ഇടയ്ക്കിടയ്ക്കൊക്കെ അത്ഭുതങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് അത്ഭുതം യേശുവ നാമം ഈ ഭൂമിയിലെന്നും ഉയർത്തിടാം Jesus is a miracle working God and he will do miracles and he is doing miracles. We're not holding to the miracle, we're holding to the miracle worker, Jesus himself. Hallelujah! Alpudam in the alpudam in the nalo vera yadhani kwaadu illi alpudam vera. In the roga shanthi vera yadhani kwaadu illi alpudam vera yadhani kwaadu illi miracle vera. In the uri dhudhani arangyal nalo patta dhudham vera arangyal e namalu vishwasikithu. Well, you did a great miracle back in 1980, God, but what have you done for me lately? There's a great song that I grew up with called, What Have You Done For Me Lately? I'm not going to sing that. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to test you the whole day. I'm going to leave it there. 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 We should not become cynical. Then number four, we see the change that happened. He confessed and was converted. And we see that in his life. In verse 28, we see that he made the confession of his faith that saved him and converted him. Read verse 28. Read verse 28. Praise God. Hallelujah. Confession of faith. John the Apostle, John the Beloved has a theme. Some of you, I hope, have passed by that banner in the back over there by the section over here to my left where it says, Seven I Ams of Christ. John's Gospel is a particularly presented, organized way that John is presenting to Christ, his miracles, and the confessions of faith. And we see this here again. Several people in John's Gospel, and John purposely points this out. They were the one that in the Bhattir, the Yohanan, they went to the very end, Kathao, Vashittal, Mao, Yerithi, Vetsha, the Chalagayin, Yohanan, the Sushashatil, the confession and the belief in John's Gospel in John the Baptist, Nathaniel, Peter, the blind man, Martha, Thomas himself, and the writer John. But a confession one. God is in the business of transforming us from doubting over to discipleship. How many of us are disciples of Jesus Christ? Every one of them used to be kind of a doubter. John the Baptist, Nathaniel, Peter, the blind man, Martha, Thomas. We don't have time to read all the stories. The verses are there for your reference. John is presenting systematically one by one by one by one how people confess and come to faith. Read that verse again, Brother Johnson, 28th verse. Simple phrase. Let's all say this together. My Lord and my God. Can we say that together? My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And the Kartave and the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Lord and my God. The other day I was in a situation and I couldn't pray any formal prayers. I just closed my eyes and then under my breath I just said, My God, help me through this time. And the day will be in the Kartave. In the one Pratikyamana. On the confession. Can we say it? Can we declare it? Hallelujah, hallelujah. My Lord and my God. Personal applications, and let me close with these here. 
stay connected with Christ and His true disciples. This is do you look for his appearing? Well, whenever Jesus comes, he'll come, and whenever it happens, it happens, and then I'll work it out all there. That's not what the Bible says. For those who love His appearing, He is coming again. Are we looking for the appearing? Stay connected with those folks. Find some folks like that. Young people, find some good friends to hang with. Get rid of some of those other guys and girls. You can hit that unfriend button on Facebook. Hit that unfriend. Unfriend them. Get rid of them. Clear them out. There's some apps you can download to clear out some more stuff. Secondly, doubts will come, but unbelief can affect your eternity. Some shame will okay. As a young man, I had doubts, and maybe some of you are having doubts. Some shame will allow the wood back to the law to them. Some shame will allow the wood back to the law to them. Some shame will allow the wood back to the law to them. Or a chili, or a planet, earth, and the world, or a chili, or a planet, and the other, and the whole thing. I know that the thing is 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 that the if you have doubts, that's okay. Tell the Lord your doubts. Be careful. Check your heart. A skepticism led you to hardness of heart. Thomas was going in a direction and Jesus saw that. Jesus saw that he was becoming hard. Stop doubting and believe. That's enough doubt. See my hands, see my feet. Hallelujah. Check your heart this morning. Have you become hard? Has life taken a hard turn for you? Has the religious world taken a hard turn on you? Have people let you down? Pastors, leaders let you down? Don't become hard of heart. Don't become skeptical and cynical. Be encouraged and know that Christ Jesus takes a personal interest in our doubts. He comes near to you. He knows what you need. He knows the doubts that you have. He knows how you have thought in your heart. Jesus knows. And He takes a personal interest in you, in your doubt. Hallelujah. What's the doubt that's keeping you from trusting Him fully? Some cheer in the what is that doubt that's keeping you from fulfilling everything you have for Him? I did a little research on Thomas. Thomas more than I do, so I'm not going to make a fool of myself. 
by trying to figure it all out. I, I read some of it, and some of it is historical, some of it's Catholic Church oriented, some of it's uh, revised. But we know for sure that Thomas came to India. Early as 49 AD, maybe 52 AD, and he was a martyr and he died in India after visiting Mesopotamia and other places. But before all of that, guess where Thomas was?
Do you doubt the miracles of God? Thomas walked with Jesus, saw the miracles, saw the 5,000, saw the walking on the water, he was on the boat. Thomas, he still doubted, he still wanted to see. Are we the twins this morning? I am a twin. In my college days, I was a Didymus. I am a Didymus. I admit that. I doubted my faith. I grew up in church all my life, but I doubted. I was a Didymus. Didymus on. With every head bowed this morning, maybe you are a Didymus. Maybe you are a doubter. It's okay to doubt for a little while. But this morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit would remove some of those doubts with the presence of the living God. Yes, you kiss the moonel on the nino, or the kaila can't you? Hallelujah. Nyan alunu, I am the one. Would you believe? We are more blessed than Thomas because we didn't see him, but we believe this morning in simple faith. Just asking that simple question. What is the doubt that's keeping you from believing God fully? Lord Jesus, we come before you and we humble ourselves as doubting Thomases, unbelieving Thomases. And as some shame of mind to make a doubt. We ask, Lord, a lot of why questions. And we don't know all the answers because you chose not to give us all the answers. But we know that you are with us. In the walk, in the walk, the sign we hold on to the promise of God. If there's a skeptic here this morning, if you're cynical, if you say all this religious stuff, all this church stuff, all this stuff, you know it's my parents' faith, it's all this, I don't know if I believe, I don't know what I believe anymore. The culture says one thing, and other churches say other things, and my, my friends say one thing, and media says another thing. I'm totally confused, Pastor. I don't know what to believe anymore. Hallelujah. In the middle of that is where Jesus shows up. This morning, the living presence of the living God comes to each of you right where you are in this place where you are. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give Him your doubts. Tell him those questions that you have. Let him answer some of those. Let him only, he can answer. He is the wellspring of knowledge. He is the one who created everything visible, invisible. He knows the end from the beginning. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, we simply reach out to you in faith, just like Thomas did, my Lord and my God, this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing that prayer. Lord, we give our confession of faith to you this morning. We confess you as Lord and Savior. Take us and use us, Lord, in ways that we cannot even imagine. Thomas would never have thought in, in his wildest dreams that millions of people would come to faith in Jesus Christ because of Thomas. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Praise you.